Welcome to this week's tutorial. We are keeping the plant love going this week. I am working on a medicinal plant garden and decided to make some really special uh, little plant stakes for each of my little seedlings. And I uh, thought you might guy, you guys might want to follow along. So we're going to start with the type tool. Uh, you can choose, you know, whatever you're growing is fine. I'm going to go ahead and do Glamour Absolute uh, font, and I'm going to go ahead and just bump this up in size so that we can see what we're doing. All right, so the first one I'm going to make is for my Feverview plant, and one of the beautiful things about Glamour Absolute font, and one of the reasons that I love it so, so much, is the beautiful glyphs. So I'm actually going to delete the V because I want to use a glyph. To access glyphs, come up to type glyphs, okay, and these are, this is where you'll find your alternate characters, and again, um, uh, Glamour Absolute has a lot of really lovely ones. So let's go ahead and select our special V there. Now, I know I've had a couple of people mention that sometimes it doesn't come up, uh, and that's true, and that's unfortunate. So what happens is, uh, or what you may need to do is just, kind of, if, if you're doing it down here, is click it, and then just keep clicking it until it finally shows up. Okay, so about three times usually does it. Uh, so you may not be able to just click it one time. I find that if I'm uh, selecting up here from this menu that you just kind of have to click, hold, drag, and there it is. So play around with that. Don't get discouraged if your glyphs aren't actually showing up in your text box. Okay, so this font does not have any uh, awesome glyphs for the F and I don't wanna use the E and I don't wanna use the W. So I think we're pretty much good to go, okay? Uh, let's see here. So what we're going to go ahead and just um, zoom in a little bit so you can see better. Um, I'm going to go ahead and right click and create my outlines. Remember that the Glowforge does not read um, type or text or fonts, so you have to create the outlines. Now, I don't have any overlapping letters here, but if you do, if you're using a script font or you chose glyphs where they kind of end up running into one another, make sure you come on over to your Pathfinder panel and click to unite. OK, if you don't have that, it's under window Pathfinder and the whole panel will pop up kind of over here. All right. So we have our words. Now what? Let's go ahead and use my favorite tool, the offset. Uh, so object path offset path. And yeah, I like this point one inch pretty well. You can play around with it a little bit. You'll notice I changed mine to a miter uh, from miter to round. So check it out and see what you like better. When I uh, use a miter, it has these sort of hard edges or this, the straight edges. And I prefer when I'm doing an offset and, you know, I'm going to use that outline shape, I prefer a round. Okay, so mess around with it until you like it. Um, if you've got this preview box enabled, you'll be able to see exactly what it'll look like. And when you're happy with it, go ahead and hit OK. Now, right this moment, our offset is selected, but not the original text, okay? So you can see that here, you can see that it's overlapping, and we are, before we go any further, going to use the Pathfinder panel and click to unite. All right, and uh, if you don't have that Pathfinder panel, again, it's Window Pathfinder. All right, and now we'll go ahead and swap the fill and stroke. And there we are. Now I like this overall, but what I don't like is this extra little bit right here. So I could have adjusted that by doing like a 0.11 offset instead of a 0.1 inch offset. But here's another way you can get rid of pesky little extra spots that you may, may, may not want. Use the direct selection tool. Click. Make sure you're not clicking on anything. Like don't click on a letter. Don't click on this. Don't click on the path. Click and just a blank space and drag across it. And it will just select, since we're using the direct select tool, it'll just select that. If you were to try that with the regular selection tool, it would select everything, okay? All right, so we have this part, but now we need to add a little stake so you can jab it into the soil, right? Um, so first, let's see what all is selecting. It's selecting both the original text and the offset. How can we tell? Two ways. Zoom in, and you can see this really very thin, kind of difficult to see, blue tracing around your text. The easier way to see is that up here, it doesn't know what to tell you for the fill and the stroke, right? Because your your text has a fill and no stroke, and the offset has a stroke and no fill. So it's like, I don't know. So if you see that, you know that you've got multiple things being selected. So object ungroup is your friend here, okay? So that will separate the offset from the, the, the letters, but it also separates the letters from one another. 
if you have a problem with your letters being separate, and right now it's not a big deal, we're not doing too much to these, but if you have a problem in the future, select one of your letters, go to select same fill color, and then just Pathfinder unite them, okay? So now we have our word as a whole, fever few as a whole, and we have our offset as sort of separately manipulatable objects, all right? And we're going to just create the stake now. So you can just kind of freehand this if you want. I'm using the rectangle tool, by the way. If you have a different shape here, just click and hold until rectangle tool pops up. And I'm going to do like about a 0.11, 0.12 wide. We'll make it, let's zoom out a little so we can get a sense for overall proportion here. Um, oops, actually, now we have to zoom in because we want to make sure that we have this, this thing to let us re- um, work with the height. I think that is probably fine. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, and we're going to just scooch it up until it overlaps with um, our offset, because in a minute we're going to unite those. We're not uniting it yet. Do not unite it yet. All right, we're going to do one more little shape. Instead of a rectangle tool, we are going to use the polygon tool. We're going to do a three-sided polygon. Don't worry so much about the radius right now because we're going to just resize it. Before we resize it, we're going to flip it, flip vertically. Okay. Now come up and get your selection tool. We're going to move this down here. And I'm going to zoom into this so that we can get it really nice and small. And I'm going to hold down the shift key as I resize so that it maintains proportion. Let me show you what happens if I try to resize without that. Uh-oh, it's a whole different shape now. Okay, so hold down your shift key. Make it really small. And the idea is that you want it to be exactly as wide as your stake. Okay, so you saw that magenta smart guide pop up. I can zoom in some more so we can see it better. You saw that when I... Um, had it properly intersected with the side that magenta smart guide popped up not sure why it's not doing it now but it's not um and then i'm going to just shift click and drag ah there's that magenta smart guide awesome and we're going to do the same over here just to make sure we're perfectly you know uh intersecting and it, i think it is so now we'll click this dot here we want to bring it up let's zoom in even more carefully we want to bring it up here uh and make sure that it's intersecting that it is right on that line, okay? So let's take a look, um, and it's not it's not centered. We can fix that. Zoom all the way out. We wanna select everything. So you can Command A on a Mac, Control A on a PC, or select all. Go ahead to your Align panel and use the Horizontal Align Center, okay? Now everything is aligned in a centered way. If you don't have this little panel, it's Object Align, and you can do the Horizontal Align Center there too, okay? Let's click this little triangle again and make sure that this is all sorted out. We're going to click and drag over both of these just to make sure everything looks like it's working properly. OK, so we're going to select just these two. Go ahead to the Pathfinder and unite. And you really want to be zoomed in carefully like at this point so you can make sure this line disappears and everything looks nice. If you have a weird little jog or, or it's not coming, up, you know, two perfectly vertical lines into your uh, triangle, you're going to either adjust the size of your triangle or the placement of your triangle. Don't be afraid to zoom in super deep because it gives you a finer degree of control over where things go. All right, so this worked great for me. I'm good to go. Come on out. Um, and now what we'll do is, I zoomed out too far, sorry. Now what we'll do is take the offset. In other words, this outer piece, make sure it's separate from the inner piece. And again, we can check that by looking for the blue line here and also looking up at our fill and stroke. Everything looks great. We have already centered it. If you haven't already centered, select everything and do horizontal align center. So select your offset, hold down shift to also select your stake, or you can click and drag. There's often multiple ways to do things. Um, and then Pathfinder Unite. Again, make sure that you're build letters are not selected here. All right, check it out. We now have a really beautiful garden stake. This part will engrave, this part will cut, and it's gonna look just lovely. Let's check on the final size. I don't want this to be gigantic. Um, it is three-ish inches wide. I'm good with that. Um, it's almost three inches tall. I think that that's gonna work perfectly for my little pots, but you can resize accordingly if your plants are larger or smaller. If you decide to make your own garden stakes or plant stakes, 
let me know. I'd love to see them. Heads up that these, uh, if you make them out of plywood, as I intend to, they're not going to survive for you year after year after year. Okay, unless you go hard on plasti dipping them or um, coating them some other way. So some people like to dip it in candle wax. Some people like to um, do uh, there's a clear matte spray plasti dip that you can do to kind of preserve them longer. For me, I don't particularly mind if it doesn't last year after year, because chances are next year I'm going to want a different style anyway. Uh, But, you know, just pay attention to what your wood is made of and if it's going to impact you know what you're growing all right uh, again I'd love to see it if you make your own send me pictures on Instagram at the fable tree and I would um, I'd love to share them and see those see you next week